Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Today, we'll be showing you how to paint Captain General Trajan Valoris for our Adeptus Custodes army for Warhammer 40k. Now, to begin with, I primed this guy Chaos Black. But, you may decide to prime him something different. Uh, other good colors are Xandri Dust. Gold paints over that really well. It's a khaki color. Uh, also, Standard Mechanicus Gray. That's my usual go-to. And also, uh, maybe gold. <laughs> that wouldn't be a crazy idea to prime this guy gold. It'd probably save you a lot of work there. But, you know, you don't have to just use the Games Workshop line of uh, primers. There's also Army Painter. Does some really good primers, and they are a bit cheaper. But the cheapest solution, Krylon. Gray primer is normally my go-to, especially when dealing with metal miniatures. It's cheap, widely available, just don't get over enthusiastic when priming your guy. So, let's go over the paints that we'll be using. We have Balthazar Gold, Auric Armor Gold, and in between those, I'll put a little coat of Reichlin Flesh Shade, and then a highlighting touch of Runefang Steel. For the red of his tabard and his cloak, that'll be Mephiston Red with a layer of Nuln Oil, then Evil Sun Scarlet with just a highlight of Troll Slayer Orange. Now, when doing his little leather gauntlets, it's going to be the Mephiston Red Nuln Oil and then a layer of Bugman's Glow. And that allows you to tell the cloth away from the leather. Now for the feather and some of the other dark bits you see back there, that's going to be Abaddon Black with Mechanicus Standard Gray. And with the leather, you, know, you have two choices on the white there. And you can blend them together, but Pallid Witch Flash and Ionaric Skin. So, I also use those. So when I was painting them up, to get the uh, white hair and the flesh tones, I painted over Ionaric Skin. That allowed me to uh, paint the hair the Mechanicus Gray with a layer of Pallid Witch Flesh to get those streaks in there. And the skin is pretty much Barbarian Flesh from Army Painter with the Reichlin Flesh Shade. Now he's wearing a cool lion on the back here. Those, that is XV88 with a dry brush layer of Xandri Dust and a light touch of P3's Mammoth White Base. And for the blue glowy bits, the gemstones you see all around on his gauntlet and whatnot, that is Signar Blue Highlight from P3, also P3 Arcane Blue, and then just a touch of Pallid Witch Flesh to get that final glow. You can see that's what gives me my lightning bolts on his Power X staff thing. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so to start, I have primed Captain Trajan, Captain General Trajan Valois in black. And so for the first coat, I'm going to do his armor and the little symbol on the back of his cloak here. I'm going to do that in gold. Since he's black, I'm going to start off with base paint, Balthazar gold, to help cover some of this up. So give that a shake. I'm going to use my handy dandy tool. I'm going to take a bunch of gold out. And I want to thin it down. Not too much, just want to get it a little wet. I'm going to stir this in. All right. Now, take my brush and 
start applying it to the armor. Let me see one smooth coat here as we go around and we touch up all this armor. And I'm just going to do one coat. Alright, so the, our first layer base of Balthazar Gold has dried and ready for the second layer, which is going to be Auric Armor Gold. And for that one, I'm going to use my Army Painter small dry brush and I've already got uh, the art gold in here so I'm just going to apply it let me get it in shot I'm just going to apply the gold liberally I don't care so much about seeing the Balthazar gold that was really just to prepare the black to take something as bright as the arc You can already see traditional bright gold color of the Custodes. So we probably put one or two layers of this on, depending on how bright we want it. So go ahead and go all the way around the figure. Alright, for the next step, I am going to do something with his head. It's too dark, so I'm going to use some iron rack skin. Alright, now I've got the skin taken care of, I want to do the lion. For that, I'm going to use some XV88. I'm just going to get this lion coated here. So the iron rack skin's dry, and the XV88's drying on the li uh, lion there. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to paint his skin. I've already mixed up some barbarian flesh. I'm just going to put one coat down. So now, you can see the gold, the skin, and the lion are all dry. So now we're ready for a wash. And for that, I am going to use... Well, I have two choices. I can go Seraphim Sepia or Reichland Flesh Watch. And these will tint the gold different colors. So this will create a darker gold, and this will create a lighter, got a tint more red to it. So we'll go ahead and go the Reichlin Flesh Shade. That's what I normally use on gold. And so I'm going to take my beat up sloppy brush, and I am going to liberally apply the Reichlin Flesh Shade. And when it starts pulling up too much, I'll just push it around. And once we get this all over the model, we're going to let it dry for a while. 
Alright, so our wash has dried. I'm now going to take some Mephiston Red and paint the cloth portions here, making sure to avoid the Aquila on uh, the cloak. Right, so we'll give this a shake. See now when we do the Aquila in the back, just take, make sure not to have too much paint on the brush, and we just gently slide down. It's etched into the plastic, so we just use that as a guide for the tip of the brush. We smoothly pass right next to it. Alright, so we have red paint down, and now I'm going to get out some lead belcher. I'm going to do some of the metal bits here. And so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and mark out what I'm going to paint the lead belcher. It's going to be these feeder pipes along the chest. Get whatever this little device is. Get this key. Now I'm going to work on the silver bits for his staff, the trigger. Power feed and his magazine. I want the barrel. So I've got the lead belcher painted on there. Now I'm going to work on the fancy feather. So I'm going to start with a base of standard Mechanicus Gray. And I'm just going to coat the front and the back of this feather. Now I'm going to paint his beard and his hair in the same Mechanicus Gray.
so now Captain General Trajan is coming together uh, and I'm going to want to touch up some of the black so what I'm aiming for is this little piping on his foot the pommel of his sword and I'm going to clean up his uh, power axe here black all that back black Block that all back in from where he got hit with the gold and whatnot. So, I will get my Abaddon black. So next, something I forgot to do was his gauntlets right there. So this is going to be a uh, leather. So this part of the gauntlet is going to be gold, but what secures it to his wrists is going to be like a reddish brown leather. So to take care of that, I'm going to do some fist and red. I'm going to get some black into these little pieces, this suit joining the plates of the armor. Now we're ready to move on to known oil. So I'm going to lightly wash the non-gold parts. So that's just going to be metal I put down and the red. Don't want to touch the gold portions of the armor. But if I do, we can touch that later up when we get back to it. And once we get that all covered up, we'll go ahead and let this dry for a while. Now the next step for our model is that we're just going to work on the cloth of his tabard and his cape. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply uh, edge highlight to all these folds and raised surfaces and try to lighten up this uh, from such a deep dark red and give it some brighter red. And for that, we're going to use Evil Sun's Scarlet. So I've shaken up my paint. Thin it a little bit more, so I'm going to use my palette.
So I took some paint on out of the bottle, put some water on it, and just moving it around. So that way it'll go on a little bit thinner. Alright, so now I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to load up some paint on it, make sure I don't have too much, and I'm going to find these edges right here, and I'm going to just start running some paint along them. Now the number of layers of red will start bringing this color up. Don't want it to put on too much, as this has a hint more orange than I want. I want to still leave some of that Mephiston red visible. Alright, keep on going around, adding layers until I'm happy with the red tone I have. So I finished up the red on the cloak and the tabard, and to show what I did here is something like a surface here, where I know the light's coming down and hit, I'll put like four layers of this thinned down Evil Sun Scarlet. But something in the deep recesses of the cloak back here, I'll only put one layer down and that's to play off the shadow that you should expect and you know put more coats on the upper side of the folds and less on the undersides that way some of that darkness peeks out there so that means when I set the miniature on the table and it's four feet away from me I can tell he's wearing a tabard and robe but one a few more highlights here and I'm going to turn to Troll Slayer Orange. Now I want to get my little shovel out again. So I'm going to grab the right amount of paint. Not going to need much. So, I took out some paint, stuck it in some water, and now I'm going to stir it up to thin it down. Now, I normally don't thin down my paints like this for most of my models. I just use thick coats and just go right at it. Why not? But since this is going to be the leader of my army, I'll spend a little bit more time using a thin coat approach. Now with the orange, I'm actually not going to use that much. So, like I said, figure out where the light 
would fall on a figure like this. I'd load my paint up with load my brush up with paint. And here I would just and since it's a thin coat, as it dries, most of the red will peek through. Depending on how many coats of paint I put down. But I'm okay with that. Because I just want to give a little hint of light reflecting off the fold or the edge. And this will give it the sense that it's cloth. And so, tabard would be a good example. I would highlight the edge of this fold here. The ones above the knee. But not the ones below the knee. I'd leave those darker. Maybe a little piece right down here. there. So that lets this area shadow, lets this pop out a lot more. Alright, so I'm just going to go around, pick out some pieces, and keep on highlighting. So I've done the red on the tabard and cloak, finished up the orange highlights, and the reason I did the cloak and tabard first, as I'll show you, is now I'm going to highlight the gold. And when you work on these models, there was a chance, I did the red first because there was a chance when I highlighted some of the stuff in here or around here that I was going to hit the gold and I'd have to touch it up because it's more on the inside. The gold is like an outside casing around a lot of the model. So you work from the inside out because see I touched some red here, here. Now when I go to highlight the gold, it's a lot lower chance that I'll touch the red than the other way around. So now I'm ready to highlight the gold. And for that, I'm going to use Arc Armor Gold. Alright, so I'm going to hit some gold out here. Not too much. And this is a much brighter gold than the Balthazar gold that we used as a base because we pretty much used that to cover up the black so that we could build a layer of this on top. So what I'm going to do is grab my brush and I'm going to highlight the edge get stuff like these little wing details you can see right there it's already allowing the contrast between the Balthazar gold and the arc armor to really highlight the details in the model So once again, this is a matter of choice of how much of the highlights you want to put on. But I'm just going to go around, put one highlight on here, and then we'll move on to the next step. So I finished going around with the gold armor. Next thing I'm going to do is do some little filigree on the weapon. So I'm going to load up the belly of my brush and wipe off the exterior of the brush. And you can see these, these little filigrees along the length of his weapon. 
So just using the flat of the brush, I'm just going to hit the top of those raised surfaces. Just very gently. Don't want to have to touch this up. And they're on both sides. Now that his armor is shiny, I want to make it extra shiny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Runefang steel and do just some real minor highlights. So this is a bright silver. So this will replicate the look of gold reflecting light as most brilliant points. So what I'm going to do is take edges like this, put a little touch of silver. And let's give his armor a little pop. Now, to really capture the light, what I want to do is make it even. So I'll do a little cut there. We'll cut there until so all the way down the line where I established it. We'll just get a little extra reflection. See, and that makes it just a little brighter. Now you can go around the model and brighten it up to your tastes. But this is a situation where more is less. Just little spots. And I can also go around these little metal -y bits along his armor and the little key he has. Just spruce those up a little bit. And whatever this thing is. So we'll keep going around. We'll do like the ammo here. Can I gun this bolter barrel? Just any place we see. Now that he looks extra shiny. I'm going to do the parts I like to call the glowy bits. So that's going to be the gemstones. So here, here, and there. We'll find little gemstones everywhere on his uh, back of his gauntlets. And then we'll do some of the piping that's glowy and part of the blade. And so what I'm going to start off with is... I want uh, kind of, not a completely dark blue, but a Signar Blue Highlight by P3. We'll use that. I'd also recommend, if you don't have that, like something like Alt Dwarf Guard Blue would do, Crystal Blue, or it's Close Cousin, Teclas Blue. Those would all be fine. But we'll use this one. So the idea being here, just want a nice thick coat around the gems. And here, be really careful not to touch anything else but the gemstone. Want a nice clean touch. Let's see, there's one there.
All right. So that's a good first base. Now, for the blade, do an example here. This is where the energy is going to come out of the X. So I want to create like a little field around it. And then I know it's all going to collect here at the edge. And what I do is I pull it in, I thin down the blue some. Today I just got the brush pretty wet and dipped it into the blue. And when you do that, the first touch of the blue really clings, that takes all the thick paint off. And then when you get to the belly, it's normally less paint on there. Draw little lightning lines. And do that on both sides. The next step will be to add some glow to the areas we just painted blue. And for that, I'm gonna change it a lot. I'm gonna use P3's Arcane Blue. I'll give this bottle a shake. tiny brush. And I don't need much of this paint. So I'm just going to use a little little touch right here. One thin stripe down. There. Now for the gemstone, what we're going to do is make a little circle. It's going to look like lights pulling and reflecting in the gym. Kind of give it like a little inner glow. Now the next step will be, I like it to match his axe. There. So everything I painted blue, the reason I switched to a smaller brush is because I'm going to mirror it but just with inside the lines of the blue that I did. So I'm going to make tiny little arcane blue lightnings within the other one. One thin coat there along the edge of the blade. You can see right there we're already adding some depth to our lightning. Alright, 
right, so I'll go finish off the other side there. Now that the blue has dried on our glowy bits, I'm going to take some Pallid Witch Flesh and I'm going to make that glow pop a little bit more. So I mix them up on my palette. And for something like the gemstones, I'm just going to put a little dot the top right corner very carefully. There. Right inside the arcane blue. Remember he's got little gems down here. Piping, we'll just do one half stroke there. There we go, it gives it a little glow. Now the ever important axe head there. I'm just going to run some white right down the edge because basically I want to fit that white inside the arcane blue that I painted on. So it'll be a big thing of blue, then arcane blue, then little touches of white. And see I'm dabbing it, trying to capture that crackle of lightning. There, and we'll do the other side. All right, I'm happy with this so far. If you remember, the more layers you put down, the brighter the white. So it depends on how much of that contrast you want between the two. Now I'm going to take this as a chance, since I've got my tiny brush out and i got some white, I'm going to do his hair. And he's going to go for, so I've got that base of gray. And so with the hair, I'm just going to take it and run straight lines back. To make it look like, you know, he's got white, he still has some gray in there.
now that I did his hair, I'm going to highlight some of his skin. And so I'm going to use some of the Barbarian Flesh from Army Painter. I already mixed them up and thinned some down. So you notice, as I get closer to the end, I start thinning down the paints more... So we'll just pick stuff like so the arch of his nose, cheekbones, create some vertical lines there. And I normally don't do the eyes anymore. Just got to be too much of a pain, and I never really saw them when I had them on the table. So I'm only interested in getting these guys looking good for the table. If you want to do it, you just put a dot of white in there, big old dot, then use the skin tone to cut back in, just get the eye. And if you wanted to dot the eye, just go get a very sharp point pen dot in there. I'm gonna build up some layers of skin coloring here. All right, I think I am happy with that. There. So we're getting close to being done. But I want to take care of this lion cloak he's got on the back there. So I'm going to take some Xandri dust. There's my little dry brush. I'm gonna take a little dry brush. It's not perfect anymore. I've beaten it to heck. I load a little Xandri dust on there. All right. So 
so that was Zandri Dust. Now let's take a little bit of what is this? Menoth White Base. So it's kind of like a khaki, just a little bit lighter. And so I'm going to dry brush some of this on. It's just going to be a touch. So I put some on, wipe most of it off. Now I am going to get some Abaddon Black. And the reason for that, I'm going to get back my little tiny brush. Do lion's eyes black? I also want to do his nose, his nostrils there. I also want to do his little claws. And while I'm here, sometimes I drill these out, sometimes I don't. Put a little black dot right where the barrel for the bolt around is supposed to come out. Do a little touch up right here, get some gold. All right. And while I'm at it, see in the uh, box art for this, they had his little 
feathers is a two-tone uh, black at the top and white near the base. So let's take some iron rack skin. I'm going to have my brush really wet. I don't want to load this up with a lot of paint. I'm just going to follow the quills. See a couple light coats of that. I just want to follow the quill formation and make it look like it fades up. But you need enough layers there to make it not look like paintbrush strokes. Just do some little light highlights up. And then in this model, they have some larger folds. So we'll just do a light touch of the color around the feather. Almost like a little dry brush. Alright, cool. Now the next step will be to take some Buckman's Glow. You gotta shake that one really well. And this is for the red leather gauntlets he has. So as we noticed, when I did the red of the tabard and the cloak, I want this to be cloth. So I did Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and then some Troll Slayer Orange. This one was just the Mephiston Red with the Nuln Oil off. I haven't highlighted or added any colors to that. And the reason is, is I'm going to use the I want the same base color, Mephiston Red, on both of these to show that, you know, whoever was making the armor was trying to go for the same color. But this is cloth, and I want this to look like leather. The way I'm going to do that is, I've already shown you how I've highlighted this. I'm going to highlight this with Bugman's Glow. And it's a little, and not a lot of it. And this will give the sense that... This came from a leather dye lot, not from a, so from a tanner, not a loomer, or whatever. And so this is the way we use similar colors, but take them in different directions to create that sense that they are made out of different mediums.
There, that gives it darker appearance. I think for the final touch, I am going to go back and grab some Mechanicus Standard Gray. So we're almost done. What I'm going to do is take these black sections, the piping on his foot, just give a little highlight there, the little joints between his armor, just a little touch, you know, bring out that color. And then I've got the little wraps in the pommel of his sword. Just highlight those up. Just something subtle. Most people probably won't even see it, but I'll know it's there. And then light little highlights to the axe weapon just along the edges. And this all, you know, just trying to bring up that notion that this is actually a three dimensional object. When you're looking at it far away. Now, the final step I'm going to do on this model is I'm going to pull back out some of my Balthazar gold. And you see the little bolter rounds in there. I'm just going to take my little brush. I'm just going to give them a touch. Nothing special. Now, I am going to call that a day with my Captain General Trajan Valoris there. Uh, remember your basing, just do it to match what the rest of your army has. I'll take care of that later, but I wanted to focus on the model. And he is a beautiful model. Very well sculpted and designed. So, it looks good, and I'm happy to have him aboard. Alright, well thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs, and we'll see you next time.